Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how you can make a functioning calculator inside of CV2. Now this might sound pretty hard to you but it is actually much simpler than you might think to make a calculator. You just got to know some things and then you'll be sure and then I'll be 100% certain that you can make one yourself without this video. So, to get started with, we're gonna need some kind of switch that can activate or start the, um, what we call the calculator. So we can just grab a button V2 right here. Then we're going to need a prompt local player. This is how we're gonna, how we're gonna get um, for example, if we want to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or anything like that. Then go ahead and spawn in another one after that. And then a delay. You're going to need some delays in this. Um, let's put it there. Um, you're going to need another delay and then another prompt local player. Um, I'll... Uh, yeah, no, I'll keep it for now. You're gonna need a four equals... a bunch of ifs... And then you're going to need int variables. I'll later on explain why, why we need the chips that um, I'm placing down. We're going to need a list. No, we're going to need um, parse um, float. Two of these. <clears throat> we're going to need... Now, this is where you grab the mathematical chips you want to use. If you want to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, then you grab a add, a subtract, multiply, and then divide. Now, don't um, do what I just did. There we go. Then you're going to need a list get element um i'll place it about there um <clears throat> so let's um get a also we need a list create um i'll move this one a bit to the right we'll create we'll put a list create here in this list create we're gonna add two more inputs so we have a total of four items then you're going to need a two string and then a you can either use show notification or show local subtitle i'll do subtitle and that is all the chips that you need so you're going to start off by first of all naming these variables to i like to call them method um but just because these int variables are here so that we can check Depend so I'm calling the method because what these are gonna check is or it, What it's gonna check is check. It's gonna check what method you're using. So if it's gonna be using addition subtraction uh, Multiplication or anything like that and that's how we're gonna come we're gonna accomplish that with int variables and I'll explain later how it works um, and then for these prompt titles, you don't have you can change them to whatever you want. Um, I'm not going to change it for this video just because it takes a lot of time. Um, but you can change these prompt titles to whatever you want um, later on. But I'm just going to show you how to wire and what it and why it works. So first of all, wire the pressed output to the prompt local player on uh, here, um, and then wire the complete execution to this delay up here. Um, and then you're gonna wire the after delay to the cancel and then the cancel output to the prompt. That's so that um, whenever the, the delay is done, it will cancel the delay and so that it won't go multiple times if it's some if it accidentally happens. We can set the delay to like 1.5 seconds maybe. Seems reasonable. <clears throat> 
um, you're gonna need this um, prompt look player and when it, and then you're gonna use the complete execution wire it to this delay here and then do the same thing which is can wire in the after delay to the cancel and then the cancel output to the other prompt local player put the seconds again to whatever you feel like I'm gonna use 1.5 <clears throat> And then here, you want to wire the response of this first prompt local player to one of these parsed floats. And then you're going to want to wire the second lo prompt local player to, to the other parsed float. Next up, we can go back down to the prompt local player. Um, I'll, okay, actually, I'll quickly explain what this does up here. So currently, we are prompting the player with... Um, yeah, some type of question or whatever you have over here. The response of this one is going to go into a parse float, which is going to convert it into a float, which is a number that can hold full or whole numbers or and decimal numbers. And then it's going to um, send you another prompt, and then it's going to also take the response of that one and make that to a float, which we're going to use later on in the mathematical functions. <clears throat> So down here on the first prompt local player, you want to wire the string or the response to A or B. It actually really doesn't matter, but I like, but I prefer A just because it looks better. So wire each of the equals to the response here. And in the B port here, you can type, for example, if the, if, um, cause we want to check if you type a plus, for example, then they, then it means that you want to do addition. So, it, the equals can have the plus sign on it. So what it's checking now is that whenever you press the button, if the response is plus, then that means that you want to use addition. And then for subtraction, we want to use this um, minus, um, like, um, what do I call it? The minus symbol. For multiplication, we'll use a star sign. And for division, we'll use just one of these, I don't, curve poise, I don't know what they are, you know what they are. <laughs> um, and then you're gonna wanna wire all the boolean outputs to the um, conditions on the if, and then wire the complete um, execution on this prompt local player, er, or on this last prompt local player to the top if execute, or to the top if um, input. And then you're gonna wanna wire the else the top or the first else um, to the second if chip like this so it kind of makes like this pattern and then and the then outputs will go oh, oops <clears throat> and the then outputs will go to this variable right here to each of these variables so essentially what we're doing now is we're checking if it is a plus sign um if it is a plus sign then um, execute this variable. If it is not a plus sign, then check if it is a minus sign. If it is, then later on, but if it's not, then check if it's multiplication, but if it's not, check if it's division. And for these um, different ints, you want to name the first one to be zero, the second one to have a one like this, the third one is going to have a two, and then the fourth one is going to have a three like this. <clears throat> Now, why are we doing this? Because we want to filter the index or we want to split the indexes apart. Since if it is, for example, addition, then we want the ad addition is going to be index zero um, and subtraction is going to be index one, multiplication two and division three. And that's so that we separate them so that the system doesn't, uh, so that the system understands which method to use. <clears throat> And then at the parse floats up here, you want to wire the top result um, of this um, first prompt local player A. Actually, it doesn't really matter which one you wire first, but wire the first one to the top of each of these um, math chips, like this. And then the second parse float, you're going to wire to the bottom of each um, math chip. <clears throat> You know, I'll actually move these chips up. <clears throat> and then from there, you want to wire the the <clears throat> some some difference product or whatever the outcome is to eat to its own item at the list. Create like this. Then you're gonna want to wire the list um, to this list get element, 
and then the index is going to be to it doesn't matter which one you wire to you just wire it to one of the int variables so why are we doing this because now what we're telling it is the first prompt local player you're going to be typing a number we want to for example in the top one you want to add the top number with the bottom num with the second number that you typed in and then that would give us a sum and it goes the same for all of these other ones and then we add them all to a list so that we can then from from there on actually get um, the specific um, what can I method with the list get element later on which we're gonna check by um, looking what index it is placed on so if uh, this list get element right here is on index one then it knows that it's gonna be using subtract the subtraction item on this list right here um, and not any of the other ones <coughs> then you wire the value of the list get element to the to string and then the result to the show local subtitle and then wire all of the execution outputs of the method um, int variables to the execution on the show local subtitle like this and that should be all you have to do so what we can do now is we can give this a test can you watch notification so we'll type for example let's do minus or subtraction then you're gonna give up gonna be given a prompt and then now you want to type your first number so let's do 10 maybe and then you want to type in your second number which is what you're gonna be subtracting 10 with let's do 3 and as you can see on the bottom, I don't think you saw that, but it said seven. I can I'll change this really quick to a show notification so that it's easier to see, um, because I think that my view was kind of blocking it. Um, there we go. We'll try it again. Minus ten and minus three, and watch what happens. 7 and that is 10 minus 3 is 7 so that is correct um what if we want to do another method let's press it again now let's do multiplication so we'll we we'll do 7 times 7 it seems reasonable 7 times 7 should be 49 that is weird that it did that okay um I'm back and I tested some things out. I I don't know why, but it, I think the variables were just a bit bugged at the moment because it wasn't um, getting the right index, but it seems like I got it working. So ten, 7 times 7 is 49. And if I try another method, um, so addition, let's do 5 um, plus 5. There we go. Now it seems to work. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't have a problem with that. That was just the variables being a bit weird. Um, so if that does happen, then just delete the variables and replace them like this because it, that shouldn't be happening. Um, but there we go. That's how you make a functioning calculator in Rec Room or in Circuit V2. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. Be sure to turn on the notifications so you get notified whenever I upload a new video to my channel. And without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!